Hey, what's going on everyone? Mike here in the BFH garage up on the rack. Today I have a 2005 pristine, and I mean pristine TJ. Um, 36,000 miles, not a speck of rust on it, completely bone stock, and it is beautiful. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a couple Eaton e-locker installs, but I'm going to start with the front and I'm going to cover some gear pattern interpretation to help some people out. I have a lot of questions on that. Um, and then I will do the e-locker install for the rear. So whether you're here and you own a TJ, a JK, a JL, um, the process is almost completely the same for all of those. The basics are all the same. There's going to be some very minor differences there. So uh, watch this video can help you out. If you want to learn how to re-gear a JL or a JK, go to my other videos on my channel. I have those uh, covered in the re-gear, but today's video is going to cover uh, gear pattern interpretation. As always, I'm using Revolution gear and axle uh, gears front and rear. And again, we're going with Eaton e-lockers today in both axles. So I need to get started. First things first, we've got to strip down that front end, get the... Uh, the wheels, brakes, tie rod, all that stuff off there so we can get started. All right, so one of the keys to not only pattern interpretation, but to getting a good pattern is to make sure that all of your parts, your housing and everything is cleaned out really well. Simple little things like dirt right on the face of this uh, uh, ring, ring gear uh, flange there can create something to be offset a little bit and it's going to give you problems you'll be chasing all day. Take the time up front to clean everything really, really well. In the case of this e-locker, I remove the uh, magnet there, spray down, brake clean, get all that cleaned up. I feel to make sure there's nothing that is uh, uh, raised up on that edge. Um, the ring gear further is in the oven, but there's one out of my dump pile here. They talk about taking a stone to the backside of a ring gear to um, make sure there's no high spots on the ring gear. Um, one of the things that used to happen when they drilled out ring gear bolts, you get little burrs that would stick up and you'd have to make sure you file those off. Nowadays, when you're um, looking at a lot of gears, they're chamfered on the backside, it eliminates that problem, but I still ensure that the backside of this is completely smooth. It's just good practice. Take some brake clean, completely clean your ring gear, Make sure you uh, brake clean the bolt holes too. Get those cleaned out really well because you don't want your ring gear bolts to back out at a later time. So again, everything just gets clean, clean, clean. The journals where the bearings go, make sure everything's clean before you start pressing parts on and that gives you the greatest uh, chance for success there. Um, same thing for the housing. Make sure you get those bearing seats cleaned up really good. Get all of the uh, backside of the inside race seats cleaned up really good. Uh, press those parts in and just have that completely out of your mind that that might be an issue. Now, with that being said, I just want to make sure I point out that during the gear setting process here, you can sometimes introduce some sort of contaminants to um, a bearing seat or a race seat while you're doing the work. So if you're trying to chase a pattern and it's driving you nuts, the first thing I always tell everybody is pull things apart, make sure you don't have any contaminants, clean it up real good, and then start from there. So ring gears in the oven, it's about ready to go on. Housing's cleaned up, we're getting close. To me, the key to interpreting a pattern is to have the ability to make a good pattern. It all starts with setting everything up right so you can run a good pattern. So like I said, I cleaned out the entire housing, got all the junk out of there. I got a great preload on my carrier. I have my bearing caps on. Um, I use a drill to tighten it down. You can go finger tight, but I've discovered that if I, uh, if I use a drill and set it on the uh, clutch release, it gets them down just about perfect every time. Um, you wanna make sure your backlash is within spec before you try to run a pattern. If you don't do all these things, the pattern is gonna be worthless anyway. So what I have done now is um, pressed on the bearings, got the pinion in there. I have it uh, to where it has some resistance on the pinion and uh, that's going to uh, mimic preload on that pinion. So now what we need to do is uh, paint some teeth and then we're gonna run this pattern. One more word about that before I do that though. What's your starting point on your pinion depth? 
So trying to establish pinion depth, I know there's a lot of uh, people talking about the numbers on the pinion head. You get a pinion depth checking gauge and all this stuff. Um, you can work pretty darn fast without all that stuff if you simply start with what was in there. Now, if you happen to buy an empty housing, then you know all bets are off. You're just gonna have to kind of start making a stack and figuring it out from there. You get a little bit of experience with these axles, you know what a good starting point is. So like on this Dana 30, for example, a good pinion depth starting point that I've determined is right around that 55 to 57 thou range. So um, it's set right now at 54 because I have the original pinion depth shim back in there and so it was right in that range right there so now we are ready to take a pattern i've checked my backlash it's right at seven the spec for this one's five to eight now a word of uh um caution to people who use this paint first of all this paint comes in these little tubes you have to squeeze it into a cup or something it comes out really thick take some gear oil and it's more than a few drops you're just going to have to squeeze a bunch in there start mixing up until you get a good, smooth, creamy paste out of this. You don't want to use that thick stuff. It makes it really tough. The very first thing I do is I smear off all the extra because it's easy to overpaint these things. You end up with a big old mess. So when I start out trying to determine my pinion depth, I always uh, only paint three teeth. That's it. You don't need to paint the entire ring gear. Um, there are people, and I'm one of them too, you want to check when you uh, get your, or when you think you have your pinion depth established, you can check it in three or four different spots. That's fine. But for the purpose of today and for what I normally do anyway, is I only paint three teeth. That's it. And I don't gob it on there. I mean, I barely have any paint on there and it's just enough to make them yellow. I don't want that good, big gob, gooey mess on there. And when I go to repaint the teeth later, um, if my pinion depth is not correct, I wipe all the paint off of my brush and I just re-smear what's on there. Again, key to a good pattern is not overpainting it and, and keeping it simple. Now, again, establishing a good pattern, you have to make sure that you run some resistance on this ring gear when you're running your pattern. So what I do is I take a glove, I hold it against the ring gear, I spin the pinion from the other side, do it in both directions for several rotations, what that does is that creates a preload against the teeth that will allow it to wipe that paint away really good. So I'm going to come back here now. I got my drill up here. I'm going to determine which way I'm going first. So I'm going to go up. So I'm going to hold down here. I'm going to apply some pressure as much as I can with my hand. Real easy to put that through there five or six times. Then you come up to the top side and you hold pressure here. And then you end up with a good pattern. Now, before we go off and take a look at this pattern, I want to talk about um, gear types out there real quick too, because in order to get a good pattern, it's always best to start with a good quality gear set. Um, you know, Yukon's a gear distributor, Revolution, Gear and Axle, all these people um, do gears their way. The thing I like about Revolution, Gear and Axle is they only use Circle K gears. So when you look on the ring gear, um, there'll be a marking there and you're gonna see the letter K with a circle in it. You will get that in every single Revolution, Gear and Axle box that you buy. If you go with Yukon or somebody else, you might get it, you might not. It's going to be wherever they can source gears, rebox and put them in there. And a lot of that stuff, uh, quality is really, really going down. Um, if I remember, I'll put a picture in here of a gear set I just did where it has a great pattern on one side and then the other pattern is clearing at the toe. When I do Revolution Gear and Axle, it, it just... It, they're very, very, very consistent. They set up really nice, they run quiet, everything about them is good. So, now that we have that pattern um, painted on there and we've actually run the pattern, uh, let's take a look. There's no way I can hold that camera, use a pointer, and describe all this and keep it focused at the same time. So I think you can see this right now. So, we're dealing with a low pinion front axle uh, housing. And when you have a low pinion in the front, 
you want to favor the cosine. So if you had to choose between two different patterns, one was better than the other, you'd want to uh, tend to favor the cosine because that's the side that is going to get the uh, pressure as it's driving forward. So right now, right here, we are looking at the cosine. And when you look at this pattern, you're going to notice that on a, uh, on a good pattern, I should say, you're going to get a little thin uh, line of paint right here um, at the top of the tooth. We don't have that here. Now, the other thing you're going to also notice is that you have this kind of semicircle, almost looks like a uh, frowny face from the way we're looking at it. Um, but when you're, when you're reading gears, you want to read it from this side. So I would look at that as a, as a smile. So when you're looking at it this way, then it's telling me with, with no paint up top and a smile, um, or as a lot of people say, a sunrise versus a sunset. So you get that sunrise, then it's telling me that it's too shallow. Now, if you go too deep, you're going to get a harsh line right back down here at the root. I mean, it'll just be a straight line going right across, and then you're going to get a sunset or a frowny face looking this way. So the goal is to get a nice oval patch right in the middle, centered on the tooth, and, uh, and have that nice little paint line up top. That would be great. But right now, everything is telling me that this pattern, um, the, the pinion depth is too shallow. Now let's take a look at the drive side for comparisons and I'll readjust the camera here. So as you look at the drive side on this one, come on. You're see how it looks almost rectangular. There's not a whole lot of, of definition of that pattern. It looks like somebody put a big old box in there. It almost runs off the outside here, which, you know, Having a pattern way out here or having one way at the toe or one way out the heel, as long as it's a good pattern, that's still acceptable. But this one here, we don't have our thin line up top. Um, it's just kind of a diffuse, jagged line down there, and there's just no uh, pattern there. So I'm confident this, this uh, pattern uh, means the pinion depth is shallow. So what I like to do to get my pinion depth... Uh, parameter set, I will add a, a large amount of shims instead of just a little because then I can determine what my boundaries are. Once you determine what your boundaries are, then you can start adjusting your, your depth in between those two until you get it dialed in perfectly. So let's go add some shim to this and uh, we're going to rerun a pattern. So I made a big pinion depth change, I added 15 thou to it, which is a pretty good change. And when you look at this pattern now, you're going to be able to tell that it changed with it. Let me turn it down just a little bit so you can kind of see. So now I know for a fact we're too deep, but I'm going to show you why. You see this line right back here and how straight and just harsh that line is right there. That's telling me that the pinions is too deep into that ring gear. Now when you look at the top side, you see how you get this kind of a sunset or a, a frowny smile here. And that is also telling us that it is too deep. Now, um, when you go to the drive side of this particular ring and pinion, you could also see on this one now how you get that harsh line right there. Very harsh line and you get the frowny face or the sunset. And that is a very clear indicator that this pinion is too deep. So now I have my parameters set between uh, the first setting and the second setting. And now I'm going to start dialing it in in between there. So um, time to pull this out again, take away some shims, see where we're at. And so I took out, um, let's see, I took out 5,000 shim and re-ran the pattern there. Again, just re-smearing the paint, not adding any. Now you can tell, looking at this, we're getting closer. This one here, you can still see it kind of has that uh, distinct line there. When you look at the middle one, it's starting to get that little bit of a, a roundness to it, just a little bit. The top still looks like a little bit of a sunset. So that is uh, telling us that we're close, but still too deep. And then let's get up to the drive side pattern. 
And as you look at that, it's a little more evident here that we have these harsh lines right through the root. And then we have that frowning face of that sunset, which is still telling us that we're just a little bit too deep. So I'm going to drop another five, see where that puts us, and run another pattern. So dropping that five thousandths out of there, we've gone from 15,000 to 10,000 to 5,000. And now you can see how you're starting to get a good, readable, nice pattern. So you barely have any line right down there at the bottom, but you have your oval coming up here. You have your oval on the back side. The oval comes back up to the top. And same thing here. It starts to cut back around that way. I got that thin paint line right there that I'm talking about that I like. <laughs> see if I can pull some off of that. So you see how that came off of there with my uh, finger on, the, on this one here, but you can still see you have the line right there. So everything is looking pretty good on this side. We are very well within range. In fact, that would be considered a runnable pattern by a lot of people. Now the problem is we come to the back side and we look at the drive side pattern now and it looks like uh, it's showing that we still might be just a tad bit deep. You see how you get that arch line at the bottom that we talked about and then you get the sunset kind of frowny face looking thing there but we do have that real thin piece of uh, paint up top but it's not out by much so I'm running out of time here. I'm going to continue to tweak this a little bit, but hopefully this has shown you how to interpret these patterns and move forward with your, with your re-gear here. And it's fairly straightforward of remembering that um, you either get a frowny face or a smiley face or the sunrise, sunset analogy, either one works. And um, what we're looking for on the um, side of the uh, tooth that is going to be uh, driven on so whether that's the coast or the drive side we want that little thin sliver of paint right up top here and then we want that uh, pattern you know kind of center between the the root and top land there it'll be a little bit more towards top land most cases now one thing you may run into struggles is that this pattern from center here will move all the way over here and you'll see a good pattern but it's way into the toe or you'll see it all the way out here at the heel. And as long as the pattern's good, diffuse, and the other side uh, concurs with what's going on with that, then um, you'll be good to go there. Now, before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know, this is a basic introduction to reading patterns. What I'm gonna do real quick before I take off is I'm going to pull this locker out, pull the carrier out, and then we're gonna take a look at that pinion gear because you can get some information off that as well. So um, let me get all this taken out and we'll take a look at that pinion. Here you go, we're looking at the pinion head straight on now. And I'm gonna shine extra light in here so you can kind of help see what's going on here. So when you look at the pinion head from straight on, you're gonna see another pattern that's gonna kind of match the one that's on the ring gear here where what I'm gonna tell you is very apparent is when you're either really shallow or really deep. But since we're very close right now, it's starting to look like it's uh, uh, gonna be a runnable pattern. So when you look at the pinion, um, it will paint opposite of what you think. So you see how thick this line is here? It would be telling me uh, on a ring gear, that'd be telling me it's a little bit deep, but it's the inverse when you're looking at the pinion. Um, and that means then that we're just a tad, uh, it would be a tad shallow if that was a really uh, thick line down here. So it would be just the opposite of the way you would read a ring gear. So the way I'm reading this one right now, looking at it, um, I think I have a runnable pattern going on. I'm going to play around with it, make sure everything was seated correctly, clean everything out, rerun that pattern make sure everything's good, but I think we are um, just about ready to move on with this uh, axle. So anyway, when you look at that pin and you're trying to figure it out, look at it straight on, and it's gonna be the inverse of what you see on that ring gear. So that's gonna wrap it up for the pinion interpretation um, video here. So if you can't interpret a pattern, you're not gonna be able to set your ring and pinion up properly. And that's going to lead to failure either early or later on down the road. If you're not 
quite sure still with what you're looking at in your Jeep enthusiast, whether it's uh, TJs, JLs, JKs, JTs, it doesn't matter. Go to that specific form and you're gonna find a lot of people out there that are gonna help you out. So you can post patterns and say, hey, what do you guys think? Even if you think you've got it and you're not quite sure, you can uh, post it and people are going to uh, help you out. So that uh, um, is a good thing. Now, one of the things I'm now offering, like I said, my, my YouTube channel's really taken off so I can't answer all the questions that get posted on the comment section. But I did open up and start a uh, Patreon account. So what I'm gonna do with that is give exclusive access to those supporters that are looking for inside information for, um, for me to analyze what they're doing and help them walk through some of these projects. So if it's something where you're really stuck, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me via that Patreon and um, I'll get right back to you and we'll help you figure out your problems there. But again, the, the forums are a really good resource. I would start there. They're going to uh, get you dialed in pretty good. But anyway, um, hopefully this helps and happy wheeling.